Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's such a great privilege and honor to be alive, to be strong, and to be given the opportunity to study the Word of God and to share it with you all. If you are ready for today's message, let's share a word of prayer. Our Lord and Master Jesus, we thank you so much for the gift of life. We give you praise. We give you honor for your mercies, your faithfulness, your kindness towards us. Today, even as I'm about to share your word, I ask the Holy Spirit, please come and teach us. Be increased in me even as I decrease in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your blessings, O God, reach out to every ear, every heart that will accept your word in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Last week, we spoke about how you should study the word of God. And I told you I had four points, four ways of studying the word of God. We've spoken about two of them. And today we are going to talk about the other two. If you are ready, grab your pen, your books, and your Bible, and let's zoom into the word of God. Amen. So the third point of how we should study the word of God is is to meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. There was a definition of meditation. Google says that, Wikipedia says that meditation is to focus one's mind for a period of time in silence or to think deeply about something. To focus one mind for a period of time about a particular thing or to think deeply about something for a particular time. Hallelujah. So, we will read um, Psalm 119, verse 97. The Bible says that, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. This is King David speaking. He said, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Hallelujah. So, to meditate on the word of God, after you have read the Bible, after you've set a specific period of the day, every day to read it, after asking the Holy Spirit to help you, to teach you, to help you understand the word of God, now you need to think deeply about what you have read. If you read, um, for example, First John chapter 5, verse 12, which says that, he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. If that is what you studied on that day, then you have, you know, set a time. You have asked the Holy Spirit to teach you. Now what you have read, you think deeply about it. You meditate on it. You ponder over it. You focus on it. And the biblical meaning of meditation is not only by thinking about it, in silence amen but after you have thought about it after you have meditated pondered over it focused on it you need to also speak it amen and when we meditate on the word of god it carries us throughout the day if you are faced with any issue during the day the word of god that you meditated on the scripture that you you pondered over has a way of delivering you from the troubles of that day or the troubles of life. Amen. Let's read Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8, the Bible says, This is God when Moses handed over the baton to Joshua, leading the people to the promised land. God appeared and spoke to Joshua. He told Joshua things. He told him to be courageous. In leading the people into the promised land. Then God told Joshua this in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. He said, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. And this is the first book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. Amen. And Meditation, meditating on the word of God is so important that it appeared God had to tell Joshua, advise him to do it so that he will be able to prosper in the assignment that he had given to him in leading the people 
into the promised land. Amen. And God said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. So if meditation is just about pondering over it and just thinking about it in the mind, why did God then say depart from your mouth? You get it. So that means that it is not just about pondering in your mind. After you've thought of it, you've, you know, um, pondered over it over and over and over again. It will definitely come out of your mouth. It will, you will definitely speak it. Amen. And he said you should meditate on it day and, uh, and night. So as you go through the day, you keep thinking about the word that you have read. You keep thinking about what you, you, you studied during your quiet time. And that will help you to do everything that you have read. Amen. But then if we read it and then we throw it away, we may even forget about it and we may fall into sin. Amen. We may fall into, you know, not following or not doing what the word of God is telling us to do. Amen. And God said, still in Joshua 1 verse 8, he says, be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. The assignment that Joshua had was a very great assignment. You know, taking the people into the promised land. And it is the word of God. That was the weapon. Meditating on the word of God, keeping the status of the word, that was what God told Joshua. That if he does it, then the assignment he has given to him, he's going to be successful with it. Amen. So beloved, what it is that God has told you to do? What is, what is it that you have found out as your purpose in life? You need the word of God to be successful and to be prosperous in your life journey. Amen. And the fourth point is, when you have found out what God wants you to do, obey him. When you have found out what God wants you to do in the way that you read, obey it. Amen. And the good news is that we have the Holy Spirit in us. The Bible says that it is God who works in us, both to will and to do according to his good purpose. So it is not by your might, it is not by our might, neither is it by our power, that we will do what God says we should do. It is by the help of the Holy Spirit. That is the good news about it. So all that we need to do is to submit our will to God, submit our will to the word of God. And then we will be able to obey what we have read, amen, or have studied. Luke chapter 11, verse 28, the Bible said, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. You know, there is a parable of the sower. The sower sowed seed. Some fell on good ground. Some fell on rocky ground. And those that fell on good ground, are Jesus likened it to, those that hear the word of God and then does it. Accept the word, meditate on it, allow the word to grow in them and to bear fruit and they obey the word of God. That is what Jesus likened to the seed falling on good grounds. But the seeds that fell on rocky grounds, Jesus likened it to those that hear the word of God. Accept it at that point that they are hearing it and then later on, they forget about it. Mercy. May God have mercy on us. May he help us to grasp. May he help us to meditate, to, 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 to yearn and to desire, to be zealous in obeying his word so that we will be blessed. Amen. Let's read Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Matthew seven twenty-four. I read. Anyone who listens to my teachings and obeys me is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Again, Jesus is likening anyone that hears the word of God, reads the word of God, studies the word of God, and obey it. He's likening it to a wise person who builds his or her house on a solid rock. The verse 20... Let's read again the verse 27. The verse 27 says, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. 
and it fell not. Amen. It did not fall because the person is grounded in the word of God. The foundation of that person is grounded. And so the storms will come. There are situations in life. God has not, you know, promised us a rosy and sweet and smooth and so easy and cheap journey. The Christian journey, the Christian walk is not a rosy or, you know, trouble-free, storm-free. Beloved, there are going to be times where it's going to be hard. There are going to be stormy times. There are going to be days where you feel, can I do it? Can I stand? In that moment, it is the word of God that you have studied. The word of God that has been planted in you. That you have meditated upon. That you have pondered over. And you have made sure that that word does not depart from your mouth. That is the word that is going to hold you in that situation. People go into troubles and we hear stories of people committing suicide, you know, killing themselves, homicide issues and all that. Because when the troubles came, they couldn't handle it. But if you have the word of God in you, grounded in you, your house, which is your life, will be like the parable of the house that was built upon the solid rock. The storms will come, yes. The rains will come, yes. The wind will beat against you, yes. But then you will stand because your foundation is the word of God. Your foundation is on a solid rock. Jesus is the solid rock. The word of God is God himself. So beloved, rise up. If you've left your Bible, you've left the word, you've put it aside. This is the time. The end time is now. We are in the end time. And we need Jesus. We need God. We need the word of God to hold us. This world is battered and crowded with all sort of, you know, philosophies and stuff. We need the word of God. Hallelujah. So the four points we have spoken about last week, we talked about the first two points, which is set a specific time for word study. The number two is to ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding, to teach you. And then that today we've spoken about the last two points, which is to meditate on the word of God. After you've read it, don't throw it away. Don't let it be like um, the seed that was sown or fell on solid um, rock that had no root, no nutrients, no oxygen for it to grow. But meditate on the word of God so that you'll be a, a, a fertile soil. The word will gain roots in you. And as Joshua, go to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, when we do this, then we'll be prosperous. When we do, we do this, then we'll be successful in our life journey. Amen. May God grant us the grace and the strength to do this and then he said after you have meditated on the word after you are confessing it it is coming out of your mouth it's not departing from your mouth do it obey it may god grant us grace we need grace we need grace we need grace hallelujah so we learn that anyone that hears the word and then believes it is blessed hallelujah if today is your first time coming onto this channel this is just in greatness I bring you the word of God. I share the gospel on this channel. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, but you want to accept him, beloved, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He loves you so much. Even before he made the world, he thought of you. That is why Jesus came to the earth to come and die, to atone, to be an atonement, to stand as an atonement for our sins. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5 verse 12 says that he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Do you have Jesus? If you don't have Jesus yet, but you want to have him, the way to having him is by accepting him as your Lord and your personal savior. It is free. That is it. Believe in him and you will be saved. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal savior, kindly pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for dying for me. Today, I accept that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. I believe that you are the son of God, that you died for me and you rose again for me. So I accept you as my Lord and my personal savior. Holy Spirit, please come and dwell in me and help me to be a doer of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Beloved, if you just pray this prayer, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. This prayer has brought you into Christ, and so you are a new creation. The old things have passed away. Believe it, the old things have passed away. Whatever you did just a second ago is passed away. That sin you feel is so grievous is passed away. Now, behold the new. What is the new? The new is that find a Bible-believing church and join you will be blessed because God says that we should not forsake the assembling of the brethren. It is what he has told us. And so we have to obey it. Hallelujah. And then make prayer a part of you. Make prayer a part of you. Prayer is communication to your new father who is God. Look through my channel. I've made... I've shared um, messages on how to know God through prayer. Listen to it, watch it, and it will bless you. Read the word of God. That is what we are studying now. Study the word of God. Just use this point. Study the word of God and you will be blessed. Don't forget to share the word with someone. Share this video with a friend, with a family, a neighbor, a co-worker. And it is a form of evangelism that you are doing. God bless you so much. This is Josephine Greatness bringing you the gospel. If today is your first time coming onto this channel and you find my messages important and necessary and worthwhile, just hit on the subscription button. And don't forget to hit on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. God bless you so much. Stay blessed. Amen. <laughs>